Okay, I've got three ideas on the way to an argument about what you need to do. So here's the first idea, root striker. 1846, just about 13 miles from where we are right now at Walden Pond, Henry David Thoreau wrote this. There are a thousand hacking at the branches of evil to one who is striking at the roots, root striker. Okay, number two, the idea of independence. <laughs> now, when you think independence, you might think 1776, that's not what I mean. I mean the kind of independence that was obsessive in the thoughts of people in America around 1786, at a time when most thinking Americans began to believe America was a failure. A failure because there was a lack of independence in the democracies that spread through the states, a kind of improper dependence that had developed in those democracies, corrupting them and what they did, as Jefferson described it. This dependence begets subservience and venality, suffocates the germ of virtue, and prepares fit tools for the designs of ambition. This is what government had become. And what they sought was a non-dependent, independent government that could give the right answer for the right reason, the common aim of those founders of our republic, were institutions, constitutions, against this improper dependence, but for a proper dependence. Right? So think, for example, about independent judiciary. An independent judiciary does not mean they can do whatever the hell they want. An independent judiciary means a judiciary dependent upon the law. A proper dependence is what we mean by independence here and elsewhere. Okay, idea three, trust. I want you to recognize the way trust is related to independence. <laughs> so think about this chemical, this, this phenol A, BPA, a chemical in practically everything you're exposing yourself to right now, 98% of you have it in your body at a level that some scientists believe cause significant harm. People ask, is this chemical safe? Most of us, because we believe everything around us must be good, say, sure, it's safe. But the research here is actually contested. And it's contested in a very interesting way. If you distinguish between industry-funded research and research that finds some kind of harm caused by this chemical, there's a very interesting relationship here. Almost all of the funded research by industry finds no harm, and almost all of the independently funded research finds harm. Now you are less sure about the safety than you were before. Or think about cell phones. Are cell phones safe, these kind of microwave rating devices you put right next to your brain? Well, 70% of you say, sure. And again, the research here is contested, and contested in a very interesting way. Divide industry funded from independently funded, and again, you have this extraordinary bipolar result, leading most of you now to be less sure than you were before. The point is your confidence in all of these cases, is affected by the presence of money. Not money in the abstract, but money in the wrong places. <laughs> now, there's a lesson here, I promise. There's a lesson. The lesson is to maintain confidence, to maintain trust, we need to secure independence of entities and institutions that we depend upon by assuring a proper dependence of those institutions on the thing we want them to focus upon. Three ideas, here's the argument. The framers of our Constitution gave us a republic, by which they meant a representative democracy. Now their representative democracy had an intended dependency. As the Federalist 52 put it, it was the branch of government which ought to be dependent upon the people alone. The people. Congress. I do my own graphics. You want to see that again? Here. Oh, sure. That's very cool. The way that bounces. <laughs> dependent upon the people. Now, here's the problem. We have evolved in the last 220 years a different dependency 
around Congress, a dependency that increasingly displaces the dependency of the people, a dependency upon the funders. Members of Congress spending between 30 and 70 percent of their time raising money to get back to Congress, they develop a sixth sense, an ability to understand how everything they say and do will affect their capacity to raise the money they or their party needs to get back into power. They become shape shifters bending themselves even in advance of a particular confrontation to make sure that they will have the opportunity to raise the money they need. Leslie Byrne, when she went to Congress, a Democrat from Virginia, was told by a colleague, always lean to the green? And then she clarified, he was not an environmentalist. <laughs> now the point is, this is a dependency too, this dependency upon funders. It is a different and conflicting dependency from the dependency upon the people, because here's the obvious fact, the funders are not the people. This has consequences. First consequences are policies that get bent in favor of the funders. As Professor Guilens has characterized in an extraordinary study of attitudes between the wealthy and the not so wealthy, policy when the attitudes conflict strongly reflects the preferences of the most affluent, but bears virtually no relationship to the preferences of the poor or middle-income Americans. A vast discrepancy. And number two, this system of dependence has produced a lack of co confidence in this institution, which is now profound. 75% of Americans believe, quote, money buys results in Congress, it's a little bit different depending on whether you're a Democrat or Republican. Democrats, 81%, Republicans, 71%. But I can tell you before the parties switched control, the numbers were reversed. Uh, Democrats were 71%, the Republicans were 81%. And as Gallup found in their last poll about confidence in major institutions, 11% of Americans have confidence in Congress. 11%. Just think what that means. There were more people who believed in King George III at the time of the revolution than who believe in our Congress today. Okay, so what to do? What to do here is to strike at the root, to be a root striker. And how do you do that? Well, the first thing is to wear keds. Look. <laughs> now, it's not a joke, this is serious. Keds. Because KEDs were created by this company, Stride, right? And this company was created by this man, a hero of mine, Arnold Hyatt. Arnold Hyatt's a humble guy. This is the biggest picture I could find of him on the internet. Very tiny little <laughs> picture. Very loyal Democrat. 1996, he was the number two Democrat contributing to the party, largest, second largest contributor. So in 1997, President Bill Clinton invited him and 30 others to the Mayflower Hotel for a kind of fat cat dinner to explain to the president what the president should do for the remainder of his second term. Each of these fat cats stood up and explained something to the president. And Arnold Hyatt was the last to speak. We don't have a picture of him standing and speaking. I kind of picture it like this, but so he stands <laughs> to address the president. And he says, Mr. President, I know you're an admirer of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. So I want you to put yourself in Roosevelt's shoes in 1939, when he came to recognize that he needed to convince a reluctant nation to wage a war to save democracy. Because Arnold said, you too, Mr. President, have to convince a reluctant nation to wage a war to save democracy. Not a war against fascists, a war against fat cats. A war against people like us. People who believe that merely because they have wealth, they have the right to direct how policy in America goes. People who believe that they have an entitlement to pick up the phone and get the president on the other side just because they've succeeded in business or in the arts. People who have destroyed democracy in America. Now you can imagine in this room of 30 fat cats after Arnold finished, there was a little bit of silence. 
the only published account of the evening, accounts that President Clinton then effectively slashed Hyatt to pieces, humiliating him in front of this group. But I think 15 years later, we need to recognize that it was Arnold Hyatt who was right, not the president. We need to convince a reluctant nation to wage a war to save democracy. But where Arnold was wrong, is that we're not gonna get politicians to wage this war for us. This is a war to be waged by citizens, by us, by root strikers, by you. At the end of the Constitutional Convention, Benjamin Franklin walked out and he was asked by a woman on the streets in Philadelphia, Mr. Franklin, what have you wrought? And he responded, a republic, ma'am, if you can keep it. A republic, a representative democracy, a democracy to be dependent upon the people alone. We have lost that republic. You need to act to get it back. Thank you very much.